How's everybody doing right now? I'll wait for YouTube to send out that notification. I haven't done a live video in quite some time. I know it's been a while. This is the day the Lord has made and we will just and be glad in Amen. 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 How's everyone doing? I have my uh, Bluetooth headset on. Uh, can you hear me okay? Send me a comment if you can uh, hear me. Alright, I sure hope you guys can hear me with these headsets. Awesome, okay, thank you for the verification. Let's start this show. It was Burning Manning who said the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christian who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out the door with their lifestyle. And I mean, walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That's what an unbelievable world simply finds unbelievable. Can you believe that, church? We're the leading cause of atheism, and that is happening more and more each and every day. As Christians, we are turning our backs on God, on Jesus. Instead of being a strong, loud, roaring Christian, like what God wants us to be, we have become the complete opposite, a weak, silent Christian. We let fear and pride take over. We see how the society, the world treats Christian, that we become afraid, afraid to speak up, afraid to be God's voice. Some of us even become ashamed to be labeled a Christian out of fear of being ridiculed. And as a result, they themselves become a silent, secret Christian. But I say today, God is not secret to be kept. Amen. The Bible says we will face many trials for believing in Christ. Being a Christian wasn't meant to be easy. It was meant... It wasn't meant to be easy. I see Christians who refuse to be real Christians because they are so in love with the world instead of God. I was one of them. They are so madly in love with the world that they refuse to give up their worldly desires for a much better godly desire. Those are the ones who think, it's okay to keep on sinning. To them, it's okay to go get drunk or sleep around just as long as they go to church every Sunday. But what people have forgotten is that church is not a building. It's not. People have long forgotten that. But the truth is, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. To be, Christ, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like is to have Christ live through you. Let me repeat that because I don't think you're hearing me, church. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like is to have Christ live through you. So why is it so hard for Christians like us to let Jesus live through us? Are we not his hands and feet? Why is his voice being silent? Why? I'll tell you why. Because of two things. Pride and fear. Some of us have gotten so prideful of the things that are of the world that we cannot give them up. For God, we are enjoying the world so much that we don't want to give it. We don't want to give it up. We hear the calling. We know God is calling us, but we're like, I'm sorry, God. You can wait, but this over here cannot. This movie over here, I've waited so long for. It cannot wait. When in reality, it should be the other way around. Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 34 and 38, If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your way. Take up your cross and follow me. What Jesus is saying here is that if you really want to follow him, we have to give up our way, which is that of the world, and take up our cross and be like Christ. Jesus goes on to saying that if you try to Hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for his sake and for the sake of the good news, you will 
save it? What would we benefit if we gain the whole world but lose our soul in the process? Is anything worth more than our soul? That's why I say that if you hear God calling you, put aside all your worldly desires because they can wait. God, on the other hand, cannot. The other thing I mentioned was fear. Fear leads to the absence of faith, but faith leads to the absence of fear. There are Christians who are afraid of the world, afraid of being persecuted and ridiculed, that they keep their beliefs a secret. There are those who are also afraid of what people might think. People like their family, friends, co-worker, or even their neighbors. That they keep their beliefs private. Some even do it because they're afraid they might offend or hurt someone with their beliefs. But I say enough. Enough being silent. Enough being prideful. And enough being fearful. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 22, All nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Yes, we will be per persecuted. And yes, we will be ridiculed. But I would like to remind you who the victor is. And our victor endured so much more than we could ever endure. So we mustn't be ashamed of the gospel. And we mustn't be ashamed to call ourselves Christians. Matthew 5.10 says, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right for their kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I don't know about you, but if I'm ridiculed or persecuted for my beliefs, I rejoice because I know that the kingdom of heaven is mine. I say, church, don't be afraid of being ridiculed or persecuted for believing in Christ. But instead, I say rejoice because the kingdom of heaven is yours. It was Elizabeth Elliot who said, The will of God is not something you add to your life. It's a course you choose. You either line yourself up with the Son of God or you capitulate to the principle which governs the rest of the world. I've got news for you. You either serve God or the world. There is no in between. Another thing we mustn't do is acknowledge Jesus with our lips and deny him by our lifestyle. If we acknowledge Jesus with our lips, then we should also acknowledge him by our lifestyle. After all, we are Christ-like, are we not? Jesus says that if you deny him in front of man, he'll deny you in front of the Father. To acknowledge Jesus with our lips is one thing, but the world sees who we really are by our lifestyle. If you call yourself a Christian and walk out these doors and go to a bar and drink, the world will not see you as a Christian, but the drunk instead. If you say you are a Christian and you ignore those who are coming to you with questions, who are seeking the truth, how would the world see you? What would they call you? Hypocrite. The sad truth is that most of the world sees the church as a bunch of hypocrites. We acknowledge Jesus with our lips, but the moment we walk out those doors, we lose ourselves to the world. How do we not give in to the world so easy? Let, look at, let us look at James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. So humble yourself before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come, to, come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For, you, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Are you awake now, church? There are certain things in life God has called us to be. Being silent is not one of them. Do you remember that co-worker who was asking questions that you knew the answers to, but refused to give it to them out of fear that it could cost you your job? I've got news for you. So what if you lose your job for doing what Christians are supposed to do? Not only did you lose, did you possibly save that person's soul, but you, but because you lost your job for doing so, God will bless you with an even better job. My point is that we mustn't let fear and pride get in the way of who God wants us to be. When we give ourselves to Christ, we told the Lord that we give up all that we are. But in reality, we're still holding on. How are we Christians if we are silent? 
How are we Christians if we are still holding on to our old life? It's true that there's there's no such thing as a perfect Christian. You can try all you want, but the truth in the matter is how many the truth in the matter, how many times you try not to, you will sin. I mean, we're all, you will sin, but the good news is our God forgives. I mean, we're already forgiven. Jesus made sure of it when he died on the cross for our sins. But that doesn't give us the excuse to keep on sinning. Whatever we do, we should always seek his forgiveness. But what I'm getting at here, church, is that we need to wake up. The Christian lifestyle that you have been living may not be the true Christian lifestyle. If you keep falling in with the world and seeking things of the world, then you're not following God. You're following the world. If you want to follow God, then you got to put aside the worldliness and seek godliness. Who do you want more in your life? Who will you humble yourself to? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7.14, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. I don't know about you, church, but I am awake. I am still trying to change from my wicked ways. And I am trying to go on a more godly path. But even I know it's hard. It's not impossible, but it can feel like it. Even when your old self keeps showing its ugly face. That is the lifestyle that you have come to know. And have become so comfortable. But there is... Sorry, I kind of uh, lost my notes here. This is a lifestyle that you have come to know. And have become so comfortable with. And as a result, it has become such a bad habit. And bad habits are indeed hard to break. But you can break it nonetheless. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 to 32. With the Lord's authority I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their mind and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learn about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew you, or renew your thoughts and attitude. Put on our new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, Use your hands for good works, and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everyone you say be good and help. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. I really hope you're awake now, church. I really do. 
because more than ever, we need to stop being a hypocritical, worldly Christians and start being a God-loving, God-fearing Christian. I'm looking around and I'm seeing this world falling apart. This very nation is crumbling. You might not want to believe it, but I believe we are living in the end of days. I see the signs everywhere. We are so divided. There are no morals in life anymore. If you stand by the word of God, it's wrong. But if you stand by the world, it's right. We have gone so backwards that we lost ourselves and lost focus on what we should believe in. In today's society, good is bad and bad is good. Church, how did we lose ourselves along the way? When did we stray so far from the cross? Jesus says in John 16, 33, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. If Jesus can overcome the world, then so can we. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 16, says, So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You, don't, you didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? We need to wake up. We've been asleep for t far too long. The world is moving further and further away from God. And it's our job to bring them closer. As the old saying goes, give a man a fish and he'll feed for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll feed for a lifetime. It is our job to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever we go. There's a part of, that's a part of being a Christian. But what I see in in Christianity today is selfishness and greed. We are quick to ask God what we want that we forget to ask God what he wants from us. Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 5 through 8. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who are, remain in me and I in him will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch that were others. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for for anything you want and it will be granted when you produce much fruit you are my true disciples this brings great glory to my father as you abide in the vine we begin to take on the vine's attributes and it will become more natural for us to see things through God's eyes but as Christians we fall into the world we as Christians but as Christians, when we fall onto the world instead of into the word, we become blind in God's eyes. We become the branch that becomes useless and withers. This is why, church, we need to remain strong in the word. We need to make sure our, action, our words and our actions are a reflection of Christ. I'm reminded of that old saying that we've all heard as a child, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus would not get drunk, fornicate, and live in sin. So why do we do these things? Why is it easy for us to turn our backs on God? Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says this. Listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear to death to hear you call. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. We call ourselves Christians, yet we sin just as much, if not more, than those who are not followers of Christ. 
That is what an unbelievable world finds unbelievable. We need to repent and seek His forgiveness. Can you imagine a world where all Christians lived according to the Word? People would be seeing the works of God daily and the numbers of people coming to Christ would be phenomenal. Possibly 10 times more than on average today. Church, this is why we need to wake up. How can we call ourselves Christ followers when we're not following Christ? But instead, the world. We have a mission, church. And that mission comes from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. And it's straight from Jesus himself. So it must be important, right? Jesus says this in the book of Mark. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Jesus didn't say only preach to those who you feel should be saved. He said to preach the good news to everyone. If we are supposed to preach to everyone, then why are Christians being silent? Did you know that there are more silent Christians than there are outspoken Christians? It's true. We need to change that. We need to make a stand and declare that we will not remain silent anymore. Let our voices be heard from the courthouses to the schools, in our cities, our homes, and yes, even our churches. Many of our churches have gone so corrupted by the world. There are many churches that have strayed so far from the word that they would rather rewrite the word to fit the world than to convert the world to the word. But I say, wake up, wake up. There's nothing for us to profit if we gain the whole world. If we did, we would lose our soul. So stop trying to rewrite the word to fit the world, to fit what you want, what you desire, but leave the world to live for the word. Am I making any sense, church? Our homes are also being attacked spiritually. Did you know that there are more divisions among families today than there were 10 years ago or 20 years ago or even 50 years ago? I remember when my family made up almost half of my church. We had my aunt and her family, my uncle and his family, along with my family. We made up almost half of my church. But over time, also more and more of my family stopped going to church. Some fell into drug addiction. Some abandoned their Christian beliefs and blamed the church or the family for being hypocrites. But all that could have been prevented if we were to have been Christians in our own home as well. You hear that, church? We never forget to do just that. Yes, we may pray every day in our homes, but how often do we come together as a family and minister to each other in our own home? If my family did just that, we could have been taking up a whole entire section of my church. But sadly, they did not. I see my family as broken. There's so much grudge, jealousy, and selfishness that it is because that is what is becoming a family. It used to be that you could trust family. But now I see families who would rather watch each other suffer than to help each other. There's a huge division among families today, and it's caused of, by the lack of God. In, Deuteron in Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 through 9, sa it says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to those command to these commands that I am giving you today repeat them again and again to your children talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road when you are going to bed and when you are getting up tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders write them on doorposts of your house and on your gates. We need to be more like Christ everywhere we go, even in our own homes. 
especially in our homes. Because church, something needs to change. We are living in the end, we are living in the end days. And we need to be working in overtime, saving as many souls as we possibly can. Are you hearing me, church? Am I talking to myself? We need to change. We need to change our heart. We need to change the way we think. We need to stop being worldly. And we need to start being more godly. The world sees us as as a bunch of jokes because we acknowledge the gospel with our lips but our lifestyle shows the complete opposite. What would Jesus do? If you, you should be asking yourself that question many times. Matter of fact, I think you should bring back those beaded bracelets that we used to get all the time in a vacation Bible school or church camp. Remember those days where we'll get like a, a bouncy ball or bracelet that said WWJD on it. We need to wear those as a reminder. We need to stop living in fear. And we gotta stop being prideful. Start living for Christ. Start being Christian. You know, when the Lord returns, when the rapture happens, did you know there's going to be a lot of Christians left behind? And you know, growing up, the thought of the rapture scared me. But I'm not afraid of anymore. But I used to go around asking myself, am I going to be left behind? If you ever had that thought, maybe, maybe you need to work on your faith. Build that faith up stronger. I'm looking over some of these comments here. We really do need to change church.
We need to change. We need to protect our family. We need to bring God into our family. And men, this one's for you. You need to step up. You gotta be more motivated with God. You gotta be the best godly husband you can be for your wife. The best godly father you can be towards your kids. Read them a Bible story before bed. And before you take them to school, before you take your kids to school, before you walk out the door, do what I do. I actually heard that uh, Billy Graham did this to uh, with his kids. And that is, read a Bible verse before you leave for the day. Or read a Bible verse towards your children before you take them to school. And at, and the moment you're about to walk out those doors into the world to drop your kids off at school, pray with them. are not lost. We're not lost. We just need guidance. That's what the Bible's for. Bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, wake us up to the truth that we have been living for the world instead of for you. Help us, oh God, leave our old self behind. Help us leave our past behind, our sinful ways behind, so we can pick up our cross and follow you. Give us the strength we need to overcome fear and pride. Give us the strength to be your voice. Give us courage, oh God. To be your voice in a world that's trying to silence you. Help inspire us and motivate us. To live righteously and holy, just as you are holy. Heal our families, O oh God. Heal our families. 
strengthen our men. Strengthen our fa fathers. Build us up, O oh Lord, as a mighty warrior and protector for our family, spiritually, physically. Yes, O oh Lord, give us the faith we need to overcome. In Jesus' mighty name. And we all say, Amen. I know it's been a while since I've done a live video. I've been so busy. Being a, being a, a parent. Uh, being, working full time. Uh, it can get hard sometimes to do uh, YouTube videos, but uh, I try and be active. If you see our TikTok, I like to share clips of uh, Billy Graham. Yeah, we uh, we have a uh, TikTok. Uh, uh, you can find us by searching WAC, as in We Are Christian, WAC Ministry. Like us on uh, TikTok. And we also have an Instagram as well. You can find us on Instagram. And if you want any uh, merchandise like this polo shirt, check out our website, wacministry.com. And know that uh, all proceeds will go to uh, benefit the We Are Christian Ministry. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope the words that God laid on my heart will motivate you and inspire you. And remember, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So rejoice and be glad. Until next time, may God bless you. You know that God loves you, and I love you. Be strong, mighty warriors.